Hello, and welcome to Classical Music on Mushrooms. This is a podcast where we explore all things unspoken in the classical music world. As a classical singer myself, I am tired of hiding behind this veil of perfectionism, superficiality, and let's be real, all the bullshit. That's just not who I am. I'm excited to dive deep into taboo topics that are oftentimes shied away from or completely ignored in classical music spaces. So with that, let's get deep and have a good fucking time. So my name is Mary, and I'm going to be your host for this podcast. Uh, First off, I just want to say I hope you're having a beautiful day today. And can I just say that you're kind of looking fine as hell. I mean, is it just me or is it hot in here? Goddamn. I'm feeling so silly today. So I wanted to start off this podcast with a a lighter kind of topic because I have some heavier topics planned for later episodes. But let's start off by playing Fuck, Mary Kill. If you haven't played this game before, you basically choose three people. And out of those three people, you have to decide which one you would rather fuck, marry and kill. Obviously, this game isn't meant to be taken literally, but I just thought it would be fun to play this game with these specific composers in mind. So the intention behind this topic isn't to necessarily like sexualize or um, demonize any of these composers that we're about to talk about. It's more just to humanize them and talk about them like they're people because that's what they were, just people. One of the main critiques I had learning about um, classical music in collegiate settings and like music history classes is that these classical composers are often talked about um, as like a pinnacle of perfection. There's just like this facade around them and it just felt very elitist. Um, And I wasn't really a big fan of that. These people were just people and I want to hear about their lives and what made them really interesting and what maybe led them to composing these really interesting pieces that we're going to be talking about. So who are we going to be playing Fuck, Mary Kill with? I thought we start off with some amazing piano players. Chopin, Liszt, and Debussy. This is going to be a very hard one. And my answer at the end of who I would fuck, marry, kill is going to be very controversial. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's start off with Franz Liszt, a.k.a. Zenny. I don't know why I just said that. It just kind of came out. So I want to paint you a picture of this guy. Tall, blue eyes, great hair, and he made the girls go crazy. I'm not kidding. We'll get into that a little bit later. So he was a Hungarian composer born in 1811 and died in 1886, and he is considered by some to be one of the greatest pianists of all time. He was a child prodigy, performing from a very young age, and supposedly Beethoven kissed him on the forehead when he was just a little, a wee lass, lad. Oh my God. (laughs) Third eye opened. If you haven't noticed yet, I'm not the best at talking, but please forgive me. Also, wait, I take back that apology. Just deal with it. (laughs) So moving on. Yes, child prodigy, prodigy, prodigy turned into virtuosic pianist. He wanted everybody to know his level of skill. If you've heard any of his compositions at all, you know that they are insanely intricate. It makes you think, how can human fingers do all of the things? I don't, I don't understand. One of my favorite compositions by him is called Un Sospiro. The song starts off rather simply, but it gets more and more complex as the song goes on. It's like taking a trip, except it's not psychedelics you're tripping on. It's list, baby. It's a freaking roller coaster. He was a hell of a show off, which isn't a bad thing. If you got it, monetize it. And no, he did not do that by creating an OnlyFans. He did that by creating recitals. He wanted all eyes on him. And there was that source of income and he got to show off his crazy finger skills at the same time. That's a win-win. And because of these recitals, he turned into kind of a rock star of his day. And fangirls would go crazy over him. It was actually called Listomania. I found that out on Wikipedia. Read it yourself, Listomania. They went crazy. They would steal his used handkerchiefs and actually try to steal locks of his hair. That's really intense. Hmm. I wonder if this affected his love life at all. 
could have, probably did. So let's talk about his love life now. All right, let's get into it. So he was into this lady, Countess Marie. Uh, She was an aristocrat. And she actually left her husband in 1835 to be with him. Oh my God. Yeah, I would too, girl. Sadly, she couldn't really keep up with his lifestyle. He was getting a lot of attention from women at these concerts. And he had a lot of side flirtations. And all this attention from other women made her super jealous, and she even perceived his public concerts as vulgar. So eventually she was just tired of being his mistress while he was flirting and fucking around with other women, so she ultimately left him at 1845. Ugh, what happens next? He wouldn't go for another married woman, would he? That's what exactly what he did. Her name was Princess Caroline, daughter of a Polish nobleman, and they had an affair. They unofficially lived together. And she eventually was just tired of being a mistress, so she tried to find out a way to annul her marriage just to be with Liszt. They planned a wedding and everything, but ultimately the annulment didn't go through, so the wedding was called off. List is rumored to have numerous illegitimate children through various affairs during his career. Did they have condoms back then? Hold on, let me look it up. Oh, I regret looking that up. Oh my god, don't look it up. Okay, moving on. By the 1860s, his fuckboy days were just over. He devoted himself to Catholicism and became a priest in 1865. And so basically, he just spent the rest of his life teaching. He even traveled to teach um, and composing as well. And he died of pneumonia in 1886. So um, a lot of this talk about his love life makes me want to make the disclaimer that I'm not equating any moral value to sex here at all. I'm just talking about this person just because, you know, we're playing fuck, marry, kill. And I think I want to know about these things if I'm going to make a very logical decision. All right. So last thing I want to cover um, on this topic (laughs) with list before we move on to Chopin is our compatibility and our birth charts. All right. I'm a Gemini. He's a Libra. How does this work out um, when it comes to our signs? And listen, I, I Googled that shit and it says the Internet says that we are 78 percent compatible. That's damn good. If I ever seen a number, 78 is a good number. <laughs> so for list, I'm kind of stuck between banging him or marrying him. I can't quite decide yet. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into talking about our favorite chromaticism-loving moody boy, Frederick Chopin. <laughs> 